This week, we're looking at the basics on another Transformer made famous by the live-action movies. The huge Decepticon helicopter, Blackout. Blackout is a great example of a Transformer name that's been reused for a lot of very different characters over the years, as a way for Hasbro to maintain their trademark on it. The first toy to bear the name was released in 1990, the final year of the original Transformers toy line in America. This original Blackout was one of the MicroMaster Combiners, tiny 2-inch tall Transformer toys who turned into half a vehicle and linked to any other MicroMaster Combiner to form a complete vehicle mode. Blackout was paired with Space Shot, and together they turned into a B-1 bomber plane, of which Blackout formed the front. The pair came packaged with the Decepticon anti-aircraft base, a large tank that transformed into a battle station, which the pair could man in both modes. Now, Blackout and Space Shot didn't appear in any classic media, and very little biographical information about them was included on the toy's packaging, which described them only as adaptable bots who could quickly analyse enemy tactics and change strategy mid-battle. Over a decade later, though, the pair were finally given full profiles in the pages of Dreamwave Productions' 2003 guidebook, More Than Meets the Eye. These profiles, which unfortunately swapped the art between the two characters, described Space Shot as a courageous, unyielding warrior who believed in fighting to the very end, and who thought that Blackout shared that belief. But in reality, Blackout was secretly a bit of a coward, who had to hide from his partner the fact that his first impulse when a battle wasn't going his way was to run for it. To date, Blackout and Space Shot's only in-story appearance was in 2016, when they were featured in the Beast Wars Uprising series of prose stories from the Transformers Collectors Club. These stories, set on a dystopian alternate future Cybertron, changed the pair's genders from male to female, depicting them as sisters serving in the planet's MicroMaster security forces. Hasbro first explored the possibility of reusing the Blackout name during the Transformers Generation 2 toy line in the mid-90s, when it was planned for use on an all-black Decepticon jet. However, this toy was never released, and instead, the name's first official reuse came in 2002's Transformers Armada, when it was applied to the Minicon partner of the Decepticon Demolisher. This Blackout transformed into a small anti-aircraft vehicle, and he appeared on and off in Armada's tie-in media. He had a small but notable role in the cartoon, gathering key data that helped the Transformers stage their attack on the monster planet Unicron. Like the Generation 1 character, though, he didn't really have a personality until Dreamwave created a profile for him, which described him as an aggressive, free-thinking minicon who often argued with his master. Blackout was also included in Armada's 2004 sequel toy line, Transformers Energon, and he would even briefly feature in the Transformers Kiss Players radio drama in 2007. Confusingly, though, he wasn't the only character in the Energon series named Blackout. First, the Energon cartoon used the name to refer to one of the Terrorcons the army of mass-produced animal-like drones that served the alien Alpha Quintesson. This Terracon was a blue recolor of the regular dive bomb drones, and transformed into a mechanical hawk. Hasbro didn't release a toy of this blackout, making the cartoon the only place the name was used, but the figure did come out in Japan, where it was called Shadowhawk Cosmotype. Then, towards the end of the line, a third Energon Blackout was released, this one a Decepticon who transformed into an attack helicopter. He was part of the Destruction Team, with whom he combined to form the giant Bruticus Maximus. But once again, this Blackout had no personality, he was never given a profile, and the Energon cartoon depicted him not as an individual, but as simply a part of Bruticus Maximus, controlled by the Combiner's singular intelligence. It was in 2007 that the name Blackout was propelled into the spotlight by the first live-action Transformers movie. 
The film introduced a new blackout, who also turned into a helicopter, specifically an MH-53 pay of low, and who was symbiotically bonded to the animal Decepticon Scorponok, who could deploy from his body. He had initially been conceived as a version of the classic Decepticon Soundwave, but as the film developed he evolved into his own distinct character, Megatron's loyal hunter who lived only to seek and destroy his leader's enemies with his massive size, strength and firepower. Blackout held the honour of being the first Transformer to appear in the film, using his helicopter disguise to attack a US military base in Qatar in search of top secret files the Decepticons required. He massacred the base personnel to cover his tracks, and dispatched Scorponok to hunt down a small group of soldiers who managed to escape with video evidence of his assault. But the soldiers were able to fend Scorponok off, and later engaged Blackout in a rematch in Mission City, ultimately destroying him with an airstrike and a well-placed shot from Captain William Lennox. Given that he had died, viewers were surprised when a robot who looked exactly like Blackout appeared in the film's 2009 sequel, Revenge of the Fallen, joining Megatron and Starscream in ganging up on Optimus Prime in a forest battle, only to have his head torn apart by the Autobot leader. But the film's toy line clarified that this was a different character, a talented and instinctive Decepticon strategist named Grindor. Like most movie characters, Blackout has received several figures in the series' various tie-in toy lines, and he's featured in assorted pieces of prequel media like comic books and video games, his loyalty to Megatron often leading him to butt heads with Starscream. Without question, he was immediately the most prominent bot to bear the name, and new incarnations of Blackout based directly on the movie character have appeared in multiple new series since his introduction. Probably most notable is the Transformers animated version of Blackout, introduced in the show's third season in 2009. Gigantic but dim-witted, animated Blackout was a former soldier in the Decepticon Heavy Brigade who had killed multiple Omega Sentinels during the Great War, who now served as a member of Team Char and took part in their attack on an Autobot space bridge outpost. Animated was the first series to give Blackout's name some real meaning, depicting him with the ability to generate shockwaves with a stomp of his feet that could black out surrounding electronics. Blackout appeared in the cartoon in a Cybertronian form, but a toy was designed for the character that gave him an Earth helicopter mode. Sadly, due to the abrupt ending of the animated line, this was yet another Blackout toy that wound up not being released by Hasbro, but it did later come out in the Japanese market in 2010. Following the movie's lead, a line of Japanese-exclusive collectible cards also recolored Blackout to create an animated version of Grindor. Then there's the Transformers Prime version of Blackout, who debuted in the 2010 novel Transformers Exodus, before going on to appear in IDW Publishing's Beast Hunters comic book in 2013. Despite being among those who had been left behind on the dying Cybertron when Megatron and his crew left the planet, this Blackout remained a believer in the Decepticon cause, though he did have regrets about how long the war had lasted and what it had done to their world. When a massive earthquake racked Cybertron, the Dinobot Slug found the badly wounded Blackout pinned beneath rubble, and in a moment of conscience decided to rescue him and get him to safety. Sadly, despite Slug's best efforts, Blackout didn't make it. His final thought before succumbing to his injuries was that maybe the quake was their god Primus punishing his creations for their war. A perfect example of how the first Transformer to bear a name isn't always the one who goes on to be the most famous, Blackout's come a long way on a journey from Micromaster to Movie Star. And those are the basics on Blackout. Tell me about your favourite version of him in the comments. If you've enjoyed this look at Transformers history, hit the like button and subscribe for lots more like it. Plus, you can get early access to new videos if you support the series on Patreon.